And so this evening, we are presenting four awards in the written op-ed and one, as we say, in the multimedia. And now, our first award, which is a joint third place award for $2,500, is to Dean Long. An investigative journalist from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, covering politics, inequality and globalization, Din has just completed his Master of Science degree at Columbia School of Journalism as a recipient of a Fulbright scholarship. His work has appeared in leading publications at, such as The Guardian, Al Jazeera and The Diplomat. Before coming to Columbia, Din was a reporter and deputy editor, hard hit, bringing us hard-hitting stories showing the other side of Vietnam's development, a development that has left millions of poor Vietnamese people behind. And may I now ask Dean Sotomayor, Dean of Student Affairs and Director of Latin American Initiatives at Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism to introduce Dean Long. Dean Long, who graduated yesterday from our Master of Science program as Camilla said, came to us from Ho Chi Minh. He'd worked at a newspaper as an investigative reporter. We would sit here all night long to review all of the things that he'd worked at uh, and the papers that he had <clears throat> contributed to. Um, but it's amazing how much of an American, uh, how much of a grasp on American politics that he has been able to have uh, despite not having worked in the United States before. In his winning essay, which you'll read later on, he said, in Vietnam, where an overwhelming majority admittedly does not even know what the primaries are, the media spotlight on controversial outsiders has delivered an ironical and unexpected message in a country where ordinary people often look to the United States as a role model for democracy. The rising profile of Donald Trump is, for many, emblematic of a system that gives voters and fringe candidates a fair tilt alike in their countries. And he finishes by saying, many in Vietnam feel that the prospect of Trump becoming the next president of the United States is not a grim picture like the Western media is pretending. Trump's hostile rhetoric toward Muslims, Mexico and China has not affected his profile in Vietnam. Muslim related issues are barely on the radar there. Mexico is too far away and the historic antagonism against China fuels the perception that anything that can hurt the giant to north can only be good. It is in this context that a majority of the Vietnamese masses, unsurprisingly, remain in awe of the system that is rapidly becoming dysfunctional. His boss at the newspaper uh, talked about the work that he had done and what he said briefly in the letter that he sent to us, uh, read in part, since he had started working with us, he had provided us with a long list of enlightening and investigative stories on unexplored ordinance in Vietnam, wildlife issues ranging from the bare bile trade to the near extension, extinction of rhinos and elephants in Vietnam, environmental issues exposing multinational corporations destroying Vietnam's rivers and secret untreated wastewater plants. His commitment to that kind of reporting continued in his master's project, which he may talk to you about, and he was on Agent Orange. It was a fantastic story, and um, hope to see the light of day very soon. Please hear from him now. Thank you very much, Dean, for that wonderful report. Thank you. Good evening. In one's life, there are always moments that don't make any sense. Uh, for me, this is one of those moments. When I got uh, admitted to Columbia School last year, I didn't know why I was able to do so. And today, when I, I am up here today, I still don't know how I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but here is what I know. Uh, next Monday, President Barack Obama is coming to Vietnam. And over the past week, as you might be aware, much has been written about the visit in the New York Times, the, the journal. And unless I'm missing something, there have been at least three stories about the visit in the New York Times. Why does the Times care about that visit? Why do they care about Vietnam? So I think it's safe to assume that because it's because their well-informed readers care, it's because their well-educated readers care. 
but I do think those well-informed and educated readers would be much more interested in reading uh, stories about Vietnam. The story that are written by Vietnamese with the Vietnamese viewpoints. So it is in that context that I strongly believe that given my experience at Colombia and my experience in Vietnam, um, that makes me one of the few people that can work on those stories. And thanks to the generous scholarship and the generous support by the Foreign Press Association and by the contacts I'm going to make with my brilliant peers here after this event, I'm very ready to come back to Vietnam to tack on the stories that international news organizations are looking for. Uh, I would like to spend the last uh, few minutes to speak about my master project that dean, my dean has mentioned. The master project is just the, master, it's just the master thesis version at my J school. The story is mainly about how Monsanto company, the uh, company that produced Agent Orange and uh, the toxic defoliant used during the Vietnam War, uh, and they were able to come back to Vietnam to sell GMOs. Um, the story dealt into the intense lobbying efforts the company has mounted to sell GMOs and about how the U.S. government has to reach the wheel. And the, the story is going to appear soon in The Guardian in the next few days. And before it came out, I was a, a little bit nervous because I, I was thinking that the story would, might it might upset my generous benefactor that uh, make my uh, study at Columbia uh, possible, that is the State Department who gave me the full price scholarship. But then I realized that I was being paranoid because what I have been doing is exactly what the US government is advocating for, that is freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and honest and impartial journalism. So I look forward to reading the story when it comes out, and I think the State Department is looking forward to it too. <laughs> um, so that's why I do think I need to leave this country very soon. <laughs> Actually, my flight is scheduled for next Monday. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, seriously, I think the fact that my story about Monsanto and about the Vietnam-US relations as a horn is a testament to the fact that at the time we are living in a world of doubt and insecurity about journalism, I hope that my story would be able to prove, to prove that the integrity of journalism would never be compromised. And at the time that journalism has become so I mean, in decline in terms of everything. Thanks so much for your generous support, your continued belief in us. Please, con please continue to do so. We won't let you down. Thank you.